Hi. Good morning. Good morning. So I wanted to introduce you to our Flourish clients and whoever else is watching our page. That um, Diane is an occupational therapist and we're so excited to have her here at Flourish. And I thought it'd be nice to just get some information. A lot of people don't know what an occupational therapist does and some of the things that you can help our clients with. So why don't you go ahead and introduce yourself and let us know a little bit about OT. All right, um, it's a big subject. Mm -hmm. um, I've been in OT for over 30 years and I absolutely love it just as much as when I was beginning. Um, I deal with um, children all the way up throughout the entire lifespan. Um, occupational therapy is dealing with everything that occupies your time. So from the time you wake up in the morning to the time you go to bed at night, if any aspect of your day is difficult due to emotional or a physical uh, component, then our job is to help you be able to do that easier to help you be completely independent in your life, whatever that is. Oh, okay. So for a child, their occupation is play. If they have issues with weakness or um, emotional dysregulation, um, our job is to help them to be able to develop normally through play, through their occupation and to be successful until they don't need us anymore. That's the ultimate, is I when someone does not need us anymore. Um, I so love I, the whole term occupation, because when you see kids, I always uh, have said this with my sisters when we watch babies, we're like, they're so busy working. Yeah. Because it's like when they've got this toy, it's like their job, like they're right. so into it. So I love how. Right, and you have to give them the opportunity. Mm -hmm. So some people, um, aren't able to roll over, some babies aren't able to roll over, let's say. So we have to give them the opportunity to want to roll over, to set the environment up to, for them to want to reach out for that toy oh, okay. um, until they're strong enough to roll over themselves. Mm -hmm. um, and like with another child who's maybe really afraid because they're low toned, they're not strong enough, mm -hmm. they're afraid to go on that swing our job is to slowly through tiny steps, build up their strength, build up their um, ability to have that courage. And they just, the desire needs to be there. Okay. So our job is to find out what motivates the person mm -hmm. to get better and then provide them with every opportunity to be able to do that skill until again, they don't need, to, they don't need any help at all with the ultimate is that you're independent. You can cross the room if you so want to. You can do your job if you want. You can get out of bed or get yourself dressed. Occupational therapy is difficult to describe in like a really neat little pretty box because it all depends on what the person's needs are and what they want to achieve. And that's what makes it so fabulous and so interesting that yeah. I've been able to do it for so long and every day is different. It's so I love that explanation. Um, I think that made it really crystal clear for me. Okay. I, mean, I, I mean, even though I know what you do and I know the things that you've been doing to help our clients here, but I think that was just a wonderful way to explain it and to make it more clear. So um, in terms of what what you've been doing and what you'll be doing here. What are some examples of some either some children that you that you help and what they're dealing with? Um, sure, if you can just give an um, example. Well, I, it can be as simple as um, a child who has difficulty manipulating things in their hands, mm -hmm. which makes it difficult for them to be successful in school. Right. Um, so it could be helping them get their hand coordination better called fine motor coordination through different play activities through actually buttoning and unbuttoning um, all the way up to more complex issues of um, extreme cases of ADHD um, or autism mm -hmm. cerebral palsy um, so where there's a more global 
um, need in terms of emotional and physical right, okay. um, assistance. So um, luckily we have a beautiful outside here yes, so the kids do. can explore if they have any sensory issues. Um, we have a really cute little area um, inside that has a lot of, um, of, of different activities for them to engage in for their cognitive development, for their physical development, um, and their sensory um, development. Um, so yeah, we've really been having fun putting <laughs> together these spaces. And I know one of the things that um, the other day you had a, a, a new client, a new child, and the parents said they don't like going to the doctors. So you were able to, to not, and it's a little toddler, right? Yeah. And because we are in this beautiful house that doesn't look like a doctor's office, and Diane doesn't look like a doctor with a white coat, right? They, he was comfortable, right? Right, and I just, I framed it as, it's a play date, because yeah. you use play with children. Mm -hmm. um, and we went outside, we went all over the house. So it was like he was visiting me for a play date. And, um, and I was really, really thrilled at, at how he started getting more and more comfortable. Yes. So, um, so I know a lot of parents right now are really concerned that, you know, throughout this past year or so, that their children have been, some of them have been isolated, not going to school, maybe not playing, not getting out as much. And so there's a lot of anxiety about going back into the world and potentially a lot of anxiety about going back to school in the fall. Mm -hmm. So in what ways do you think, um, well, I know our whole team here at Flourish can help in many ways, but in what ways do you think that you can help kids that are having that um, anxiety about getting back into the world again? Um, that is an excellent question. We talked a little bit about doing like social groups here. Mm -hmm. right. um, and I think that would probably be the best. I usually see people one-on-one. -on -one. Right. Um, but for that type of anxiety, I think the social groups that we're developing mm -hmm. Um, would be the best way, right? Because again, this is a fun, beautiful setting that's just like visiting someone at their house, but yet we can kind of manipulate the environment and monitor everybody's emotional level mm -hmm. um, so that they will have success and they will feel comfortable. That would be probably the best thing, I think. Right. Yeah. Also, it just occurred to me that. Um, I know oftentimes kids are anxious about going to school because they don't feel confident or they feel like they are struggling with their comprehension or their writing or their gross motor skills. So, so helping the parents identify what's, what's, what are they really uh, concerned about? What are they fearing? And so a lot of those types of things, you can help them gain the confidence in their fine motor right. or their gross motor. Right. So Absolutely. you also, I, right. sure. I would evaluate, right. um, you know, that is usually what happens is the parents will tell me I'm observing this, this is a difference, this is a change, or he's not quite where his brother was. Um, and so I would do a full evaluation mm -hmm. of their cognition, their social, their play, their behaviors, um, flexibility, adaptability, um, gross motor, fine motor, and then kind of figure that out where we need to um, address those issues. And usually if somebody is feeling like they can't throw the ball as well as somebody right. else, or they're falling all the time, or why can't I ride the bike? Through occupational therapy, we can help de increase their skill sets, mm -hmm. increase their core strength so that they have the gross motor coordination. Uh, through weight-bearing activities and teaching them, mm -hmm. the parents and the family, these are really great activities to play with your kid on the weekend. Right. These are the great sports to get your kid into mm -hmm. um, once we get him at a certain level or she at a certain level of strength. So that is true. A lot of behavioral issues that you see might be from this feeling of, of physical insecurity. Yes, yes. Mm -hmm. And that, that's just such a wonderful thing. And I love how... Um, with occupational therapy, you're just looking at the entire person in their environment Absolutely. in every aspect. Yeah. And I, I, you know, I think the combination, you know, us having a child adolescent psychiatrist here, having an occupational therapist here, having a therapist that specialize in play therapy and child therapy, having someone who can look at their nutrition and diet, because we know that that has a yeah, big impact. Huge. 
and just being able to have a setting where we can really support these kids in a you know comprehensive integrative way is just is just really exciting so um, I'm thrilled to be here yeah and it is just been so much fun <laughs> let's talk a little bit about adults too so oh. I know that you've done some amazing work with some very um, physically challenged adults which is such meaningful work as well. So we can also support adults here. Yeah. So what are some things you do with adults? Um, well, neurology is primarily my specialty. Okay. So um, I see a lot of traumatic brain injuries, um, uh, Parkinson's, Parkinson-like syndrome. Um, I see um, strokes um, and some kind of, some issues where there's no real known mm -hmm. diagnosis, but it's manifesting with some unusual cognitive shifts, um, some unusual neurological tics, so to speak. Mm -hmm. um, I like to do the same thing with my adults is after an evaluation, you figure out what is going on, how is their cognition, memory, vision, balance, strength, fine motor, gross motor, are they able to take care of themselves? Are their caregivers burned out? Looking at the whole picture and then developing a very individualized plan for that person and putting the, at the top, what is their top goal? Mm -hmm. And how do we take those steps to maintain, to get to that goal, to succeed, um, and to get them to the highest potential functioning that they mm -hmm. can possibly function to lessen the amount of burden on the caregivers mm -hmm. uh, and to teach the caregivers. I go into the homes and I will watch uh, for hours their interactions and then develop a plan of, oh, this will make it easier on you. Wow. This will also help him be able or her be able to get her shirt on better. Mm -hmm. um, so we absolutely look at from the time they wake up in the morning can they get out of bed? All the things you do during the day, are they safe? What can I do to make the environment better? We use adaptive equipment. Oh, right. um, it is, I could make things to make things easier, switching just the furniture around, picking things up. Um, it is, there's so many things right. that you can do to help somebody's life be easier and to help them be more independent, That's no amazing. matter what their diagnosis right. is. And no matter what their diagnosis is, if it's a physical, there's a psychological component yes. that has to be addressed. Mm -hmm. When you are a mother and you have even just a broken wrist that you know is gonna heal, it still affects you emotionally on, on your role. So as an OT, we need to address all that as well. And the psychological effect it has on the family when there's so also help them uh, with the acceptance of it yes it's how it's emotionally affecting them how it's changed their lives yes help them process that and be open and start to heal and right find ways to manage and giving them any opportunity to do something for themselves so really empowering them. empowering them absolutely because that gives and, them the will to keep right. going and fighting because if somebody it. is always feeding yeah. you you don't even try to feed yourself it, it you kind of disassociate and you kind, you just get into your head yeah. and so my job is to get the person to do whatever it is they can do no matter how little it is mm -hmm. I work with people that can't speak um, with using a computer program so that they can control their environment using their eyes right. um, or sign language mm -hmm. using just one hand sign language mm -hmm. so that they can communicate um, it is so you have a humongous toolbox, Diane. <laughs> well, thirty I'm years. Thinking, I mean, like, the world is our toolbox. Yeah. The world and your imagination. So you just have to really... And you just have to. It's like it's so. It, there is no problem that cannot be solved if you want it bad enough. That's amazing. I love you that. Know, and and I learned that when I was twenty two in the burn unit, I had to co sign a consent for a young man to have surgery to have his fingers removed because they were so badly burned. And he looked at me and said, will I ever be a carpenter again? 
And I said, yes, if you want to be. Wow. And I signed it and he ended up being a carpenter again. Oh, that's amazing. I, I mean, I, I chills. <laughs> but it was one of those things where, yes, we are amazing. We Our are brains amazing. are amazing. Our will is amazing. And we cannot, my, I just feel that my job is if you're willing to work a little bit, I'll take you there. I'll take you all the way there and we're gonna have a great time doing it. That's that's what I want and that's what I've been able to, to do. And that's just so yeah. exciting to me because I think, you know, the more I think about how grateful I am that I've put together this amazing team and that you're part of it and all of the things, I had no idea. I mean, I brought my son to an OT when he was young for fine motor, you know, but they did work on his core and all these other things as well and I saw the benefit. But that was for one little thing. Um, and I, you know, I knew some of these other um, things that you could support people with, but I had no idea it was so, until I met you, how much you can do and how much you can cha help change people's lives by empowering them and teaching them to be independent. Right, right. and it's them doing them. it. Them, yes. I am giving them the opportunity. Mm -hmm. I am seeing what is possible. Right. And I, once they believe that they can do something, I'm not needed anymore. Mm -hmm. And it is beautiful. Yes. When that dawns on them, oh, I can do this. It may take a little while, but I can totally do this. I might need to use this piece of equipment, but I can do this. That's, it is beautiful. Yeah. So it's really me and believing until they can take over. Mm -hmm. It's not, it's, it's all the person, it's mm -hmm. all them. I am just a tool yes. to help them see, a mirror, you know, that, that shows them what's possible. And I, I believe it's like that with coaching and therapy too, that the coach or the therapist provides the, the client with that, you know, helping them discover within themselves what they truly have and what they can do and helping them become more empowered and motivated. And they do the work themselves. It's like we are there to support and to help give them some tools. Um, I, I'll never forget, I mean, I've had people in the past, they would say to me, um, I keep hearing your voice, and so I stopped and I breathed, or I did that, and then, then they'll finally come in one day, and they'll be like, it wasn't your voice anymore, it was my voice, that's and I'm awesome. like, that's right. what, that's, because I would you know, always say that there's going to be a day, it's not going to be my voice, it's going to be your own voice, and that's what you're helping them to exactly. do as well. Exactly. So... We are here, we're here for you. If you have a child, a, a teen, um, a family member, you yourself, um, that, that we can support, please call us, 301-570-4050, or you can visit our website at flourishcounselingandwellness.com. So thank you, Diana. Oh, thank really you, I'm looking forward to meeting you all. Yes.